going on? I'm here with UFC Bantamweight Julia Villa. She is fighting Misha Tate Saturday at UFC Austin. You're coming back after uh, over a two-year layoff. Very excited to see your return. Is uh, How is the training going and is ring rust any sort of concern for you? Ring rust is never a concern. Um, training's going great. Training's been going great. Uh, I did have – I sustained an injury, and so that's what took me out uh, for, you know – long time um and then because i knew i was going to be injured uh and out i was like hey let's have a kid so um but all that being said i still found a way to train so i still found a way to move whether it just be footwork or lifting or something or the other so i i think more of the concern for me is going to be the audience because i haven't fought in front of an audience since 2019 so yeah That'll be a little overwhelming. Yeah, you beat me to the punch. That was actually going to be my next question. Your first fight was 2019 in front of a crowd, still in Vegas, but in that uh, in the T-Mobile. Your next three were at the Apex. So, yeah, what what are the vibes like for you, knowing that you're going to be in front of a, a packed crowd? I am overwhelmed with gratitude. Um, I know so many people and so many gyms from Oklahoma, the entire state of Oklahoma is going to Texas to <laughs> cheer me on. And it's, it's exciting. I love performing and I love performing in front of, you know, a hometown crowd. So um, I think, I think it'll be just, um, electrifying and I'll push myself just a little bit harder uh, when I get in those sticky situations, just because I know that my, my people are there for me. Yeah. So you, when you were doing those apex fights, um, it was kind of, it was in that weird era where they were doing some in the apex or most in the apex, but every, you know, some in uh, the arenas, would you feel a different energy in the apex? If it's so quiet, you can hear both corners. Would you kind of, you know, even throughout the fight week, you'd be like, man, I wish there were fans here. So I, I, like I said, I do like performing in front of a crowd. Um, but I feel like I'm such an energetic and active fighter that I remember camera people cheering me on. I remember hearing the fighters in the back room at the apex like going crazy when I went crazy. And so if I can get my peers and people that see this day in and day out to get amped, like it just, there was always someone watching, you know what I mean? And it's just uh, exciting and exhilarating and it feeds into my pursuit to win. Um, And I think I can carry that over into the arena. So uh, it's a little different, but like, I mean, I put on a show. That's what I do. <laughs> and so uh, whether it be one person or 10,000, I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to put on a show. And that's, I mean, no difference for me. So you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, part of the layoff was you you did have a, a child, a daughter. Um, I guess a little late for congratulations, but congratulations. So how has <laughs> you. You know, pre and post motherhood changed your outlook on training fighting and and what was kind of the journey back like for you so um i think the biggest constraint and uh for most people is going to be time right a time um to get all of my training in time to spend with my daughter time you know to feed her and especially being a mother like i nursed her for a year so um there's just so much demand on my time And it's really, really difficult um, for any parent to try to juggle, you know, having a career, a nine to five, having uh, a fight career, a successful fight career and having running a gym um, and having a kid. So it's it's a lot. And um, I'm used to being able to juggle a couple of things, but now I have someone relying on me. And so uh, it, it was just it's been difficult you know and not without its learning opportunities but I have such a great support system and the job that I have now my nine to five like they're super understanding and you know everyone works together for the the common good and the greater good so whether that be my fight whether that be you know coming into the office or doing something else like it's uh we're all working together and it I'm just in a really really good place 
um, as far as pregnancy, <laughs> that uh, was not good to my body. I was a big girl. And like I said earlier, it wasn't because I wasn't working out. It was just the way my body reacted. Um, after I delivered, I was 225 pounds. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I was uh, a big girl and um, the weight just didn't come off and it didn't come off and it didn't come off. And I think a lot of it was hormones. And um, again, it's not because I wasn't trying. It was just that was my body and my body had a different goal at that point in time. And so that prevented me from starting, uh, from getting back into the UFC. You know, they don't exactly have a 225 division for women. So <laughs> I'm not going to be in there fighting Gabby Garcia, but, um, so it just took a little bit longer. Um, I really focused on my recovery and being the best person that I could be in the ring and as a mother. So, um, you know, I went from 225, I was 225 this time last year. Um, in July, I was still around a buck 85. So, <laughs> I was, and you know, when I weigh in next Saturday, I'm going to be 135. So, yeah. Good on that journey. Yeah. I know you said you might've thought it was hormones or something. What did you do where to finally start losing weight? Was it just as simple as you needed time or was it, you know, a dietary change or a fitness change? Like what clicked to where you could finally start? I started crying a lot. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, I, I really, I started, I didn't change my workout routine. Like I still worked out just as hard. Um, what I did change was I actually, I needed to stop nursing. So, um, that as soon as I stopped nursing, like all the weight came off, which is a little, um, different from what people, uh, experience, but you know, that's just my body and that's what happened to me. And yeah. Yeah. Well, we're definitely glad to see you back. Uh, you did make it back to 135. If not, they might've had to open women's uh, light heavyweight for you. <laughs> but I, I see on your Instagram all the time, uh, your daughter, you have her in the gym with you. Are you kind of, or do you plan on pushing her to train, maybe not compete, but you know, what are you pushing her towards in terms of martial arts, MMA, all that stuff? She's definitely going to know how to take care of herself. And that's my priority is uh, for her to know how to defend herself, know uh, how to say no and set up her boundaries. But whether she wants to actually fight or not, that's up to her. Um, I, and I, I, I say this lovingly, um, I am the American dream. I am able to balance a career, a nine to five. I fight for fun. I don't fight for the paycheck. I just really enjoy it. Um, so I want my daughter to be a Renaissance woman. I want her to be the American dream. I want her to, you know, if she wants to fight, that's totally cool, but she needs to have something outside of it. So it's not something that I want to define her just like it doesn't define me. Yeah. That, that makes a ton of sense. So let's move on to this, this fight you do have coming up for you. Your comeback fight is against Misha Tate who is a legend of, of, you know, women's MMA. How did that come about for you? And what were, what was going through your head when you got the call? Well, I did put in my name for a fight. You know, I, I was ready. I was looking, I wanted to fight before the end of the year. And uh, my manager was talking to me and he's like, well, you know, there's a couple of people that are injured, a co couple people moving up this and that they probably don't want to give you a rematch. So what if they give you Misha Tate? And I'm like, dude, that's, that's the best thing I could think of. You know, she's a legend. It's a hot mom fight. Like, let's do this. And so I feel like we put it out into the world and it just manifested itself. Um, I didn't push for it. I, the powers that be, um, they decided and they came back with it. And when my manager told me about it, about Misha Tate, them offering Misha Tate, I was like, oh my God absolutely yeah so, so uh go ahead oh, go ahead oh, i'm done <laughs> okay well, so misha's 12 in the division and you're 13 um and right now there's no champ 
So what do you think a win over someone with her name does for you in the scope of the division? So I think uh, a decided win would be good. Um, A finish would be better. And I think if I get two finishes in a row, I am a huge contender for uh, a title shot. And I think what I envision happening is I think Raquel Pennington is going to win that title and I'm going to get my, that, that fight that was supposed to happen December of 20, what was it? 2021 against me and Raquel. It's going to happen, but it's going to happen for a title. That would be amazing. Well, Julia, this was awesome. Thank you so much for the time today. I really enjoyed this conversation. Before we're done, I got to ask, what is your prediction for the fight? How do you think it's going to go down? Misha's going to shoot. Misha is a wrestler. Um, She made a very long and successful career um, getting people to the ground and finding her finish. I'm a very physical person, and I think she's going to find it pretty difficult to deal with me. And I got that mom strength now. So it's a, it's a real thing. Um, You're going to see a finish. You're going to see, you're going to see me destroy and be live up to my name of the raging Panda. All right. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you.